and welcome to Old Classic Car and Part 5 of Original Photos of British Cars in the 1950s and the 1960s. And to begin with, we have an unregistered example of a Wolseley 450. Uh, these were built from 1948 through to 1953. Very much a quintessential English village scene here. Fantastic lady pushing a pram in the road in the distance. Uh, very few road markings and so on. And next up, we have a Morris 1100, a four-door Morris 1100, the ADO 16 car. Um, but does anyone recognise that car's registration? 36199. Not quite sure what area that comes from. Next up, an early 1950s Hillman Minx. Um, clearly in a workshop for a little bit of repair work. The grill is slightly damaged. There's a motorcycle just on the left there. Um, the car is two-tone, the bonnet and the roof are different to the front wing, so maybe it was a taxi or something like that. If you uh, can add any more information on that car, please let me know. GAJ606, that's a 1950 Bond mini car. Uh, this version of the mini car was built from 49 to 1951 and was retrospectively called the Mark A Bond mini car. Next up, a colour photograph this time from 1963, and here we have a section of the M1 motorway. Uh, more details I do not have. There appears to be a Scammell uh, tanker on the left there. There's a little Anglio state van parked up on the hard shoulder. Two photos now of Cow 95. This little van actually predates the 1950s slightly, but these were such a common sight in the 1950s and 1960s, I thought I'd include it here. This is a Ford's and half ton van with added windows in the back, quite a common modification back in the day. There were tax benefits to doing that. Here's a side view of the same van and the same lady with it. That's quite an early example, this one actually. Uh, probably late 30s, early 1940s, something like that. But like I say, these were built right the way through until 1957, so very much a common sight on British roads back in the day. Slightly later now, we've got a Mark I Austin A40 Farina. That looks like it was probably a Farina grey car with a black roof. And these had the 948cc A-series engine. Uh, and were built from about 58 to 1961, if memory serves. This is a deluxe car. Two photos now of GVH487. That is a Humber Hawk. Uh, the registration is from Huddersfield. That series was introduced in February of 1953. But what's that part alongside? There's shades of uh, Austin Gypsy or Land Rover there, but I don't think it's either of those. There's that uh, Humber again, uh, sandwiched by a just post-war standard saloon, probably a 12 or a 14. Uh, the pre-war cars had flutes in the side of the bonnet, the post-war didn't. And behind the Humber, we have an early 1950s Hillman Minx. These photos are slightly later than the 1960s, early 1970s in fact, but apart from the Triumph Toledo on the left, all the cars there are pretty much typical to the 1960s. Got an Anglia, a little uh, Reliant uh, Regal on the side there. There's a Morris LD van a bit further up. Here's a view further up the same road. There's a Morris Minor Traveller on the left there, an MGB Roadster driving towards us. And there is that Morris LD on the right hand side. It looks like it's been converted into a camper van. And if you stare very closely, there's a gent just on the right hand side reaching into his bucket to give it a wash. Another colour photo. This was one of several that were sent over by John Edgar a little while ago for inclusion on the old classic car channel. 350 FCV is a 105 E Ford Anglia with some very large tyres on the back. And continuing with these original photos of British cars in the 1950s and 1960s, we've got a side on view of a very smart Vauxhall Wyvern of the early to mid 1950s. This was an E series car. Elderly lady sat inside it, and a younger lady with her daughter perhaps stood outside of it. Coach trip time, and here we have a half cab coach of some description, quite a large group of people there. It appears to be an RAF chap in the middle at the front, um, but was that a works outing of some description? I'm not quite sure. There's no notes sadly with this particular photo. Uh, if they all fitted in that coach, it must have been quite a tight fit. And we've got another coach trip here. This is a Southdown. Uh, 
coach just in the background there, one of two in fact. Uh, it looks like a school trip or perhaps a, a church youth group outing or something of that description, but they, they all look very angelic. Into the 1960s, the C registration turned 1965 Series 1 Jaguar E-Type. It appears to have had a slight nerf at the front corner. The uh, indicator is damaged and there's a bit of a dent in the bonnet there and the bonnet doesn't quite fit properly now if you look at the lower edge above the sill, uh, but I'd still have it. Oh dear, we have a Phase 2 standard Vanguard here being used for development and testing work, uh, presumably for motorway barriers, armco barriers of some description. There's all manner of testing and photography equipment on the left there, you can see. It's quite an interesting scene actually. Is there someone sat in there but in the passenger seat, really? Anyway, another E-Series Vauxhall next, uh, it looks like a Velox to me. Now um, you had the Wyvern, the Velox and the Cresta. The Wyvern was a four-cylinder car, the Velox and the Cresta were a six-cylinder, the Cresta being top of the tree. Next up, I think this was in Manchester somewhere, St. Luke Street, probably part of a planning application that was going through at the time. On the left, we've got a, quite a rare Mark II console estate. And in front of that, a little comma lorry, and over to the right, a Ford 100E Prefect. Prefect, because it has the four doors. Now the Ford here, this is an early 1950s example of the E83 uh, Ford van. The early ones were Ford since the later examples were Thames. This doesn't have a badge on the bonnet, so it's probably one of the last of the Fordson half-ton, 1000 weight vans. Another old motorway photo here, advertising the Birmingham to Preston section of the M6. Further extension of the M6, opening 1967. These are actually referred to in the photos as Primley Motorway 6, it says on the back of this particular photo. Classic Mini now, RTS 370, as a Morris Mini Cooper on the 64 Coupe des Alpes. Uh, the drivers were Margaret McKenzie and Joseph Lowry, husband and wife team. Is that them there? I assume that's the, the pair of them there. Another motorway photograph. This is the M6. Uh, the notes on the rear again. It says Primley Motorway 6, looking towards Blockswich. I'm guessing that's somewhere down near junction 10 of the M6 motorway. Next up, a group of ladies and a rakish little Hillman Minx convertible, one of the Audax series cars from the 1960s. Uh, in the background, we've got a 105E Anglia and a huge coach beyond that, possibly a Bedford Val or something similar to that. This is one of my old photos, 820 FTT is my Austin A40, there's my great aunt stood alongside in Exmouth in about 1960 or 61, the car is a 60 um, and it's been in the family ever since. A couple of old British cars here, the car on the left is a Mark II Jaguar shaped Daimler, the V8 250, or the 2.5 litre as it was called for a time. The car on the right is a Ford 100E, location unknown. To the late 40s, early 1950s now, we have a Vauxhall L-Type, possibly a Velox I would have thought, or possibly the Wyvern version. Slightly grubby, well used car, so I'm guessing this photo dates probably to mid 1950s, something like that. But again, a very common sight throughout the 50s and into the 1960s. To the late 60s now, we've got a head on view of RRL 57G. This is another of John Edgar's photos they kindly sent me. This is a Ford Cortina Mark II GT. If you can help me out with any period photographs like the ones in this video and the ones that came before, please, please drop me a line and um, send me some scans over. That would be great. Another Cortina Mark II here, uh, SAP 595G, and a gentleman with a caravan in the background. Uh, he appears to be taking it easy on his holidays, I'm assuming. Here's a Mighty Machine 8172 RW. This is a Jaguar Press car. It's a Mark 10. This had the 3.8 litre XK six cylinder engine under the bonnet. 
the later version was the 420G that had the 4.2 litre version but that had the strip down the side so therefore we know that that is a Mark 10. Now to St. P- Peter's Maritzburg, Peter Maritzburg in South Africa we've got a Triumph TR3A. I know it's not a TR3 because it's got the exterior door handles and that identifies it as the 3A. But does anyone know who's driving it here? This was in the early 1960s. At the same location in South Africa, we've got a Morris Minor two-door saloon being given some welly. One of John Edgar's photos here from the early 1960s in a very snowy winter in Anglia. Got a minivan over there, a couple of lads running past. Uh, throwing snowballs, I think. There's a Thames 400E panel van in front of an unidentified lorry. Now, it took me a while to identify this. I wasn't sure if it was a Herald 1360 or an early Vitesse, but the tax disc in the window is for June 64, and only the Vitesse 1600 was in production at that point. The 1360 Herald had yet to go on sale. So that is an early Vitesse. There's a little bubble car in the background as well. Two photos now of RJO114, a much weathered looking Morris Minor MM. This is one of the late MMs with the revised headlamp position that we're going to feature in the Series 2s and the Morris Thousands later. It's clearly had a bit of a ding, one of the windscreen panes is out, um, but not a major impact. There's obviously some denting there on the front wing and a little one on the rear wing, so I'm not quite sure what went on there. Um, were these these may have been insurance assessor photographs something like that i would have thought but there are no notes with them unfortunately not sure where this was but we have a 1950s daimler pulling into a smart driveway is that a conquest or a century i'm sure someone will know as always if you can add any extra information to the photos that i share in these videos please please pop a note in the comments it's always welcome and i always like to read your comments Next up, a very smart standard 10 of the mid-1950s. There's a tray plate hanging on the front there, so it could, be, it could well be a brand new example of a standard 10 being delivered. Um, I'm not quite sure where this was. There are no notes on the back. Quite often people put notes on the back of these photographs and it really helps. And it would have helped very much in this case as well. We have an Essex County Coaches Limited coach on a Welsh Tour, FAN 783. But does anyone know what chassis and who did the bodywork on this particular vehicle? I'm sure some coach enthusiasts out there will see this and know instantly. So again, please let me know. This is a wonderful old photo of a 100E Prefect with Frankie's fish and chips and boiling water on sale in the background. Crisps and Tenants fish and chips. On the sign on the right hand side, you can just see South Sheet, which I think is South Shields. And there is a company of the same name, Frankie's fish and chips, going in South Shields to this day. Next up, we have a 1965 Bondi Keep 4S. This was based on the Triumph Herald running gear. And even that front door, apart from the upper frame, is that of the Triumph Herald. And it's got the same bonnet catches and the lift forward front as well. Fiberglass body, apart from the doors, of course. Next up, we have a dock scene. I'm not sure where this is. There's an 1100 on the left. And in the middle, a Ford Anglia 100E. Over to the right, we've got the classic British Morris Minor just popping into shot. Picnic time, as with so many of these old photographs, and there's a variety of cars on show here. We've got a Morris Minor. And one of the 1100 range just beyond that I can see a Mini further up and a Farina and just driving towards us on the road is a Vauxhall Victor. Another photo I think from a Manchester planning department many years ago and just to the right there we've got an MG Magnet uh, with a tray plate hanging on the front and on the end of the building a fantastic sign for Firestone Town and Country Tyres, the first and finest all season rear wheel tyre. Back to the 1950s and we have a Ford Popular 103E next, 624 DRL, and alongside that an Austin A40 Devon, the four door saloon. Mm. 
looks out rather London to Brighton. This is a 1904 Cadillac, but for the purposes of this particular video, we are looking at the Thames 400E minibus in the background, NPN 956. Fantastic photo now of a late 1950s Morris Minor being loaded into a Silver City uh, Bristol freighter. Look at the chap cleaning the cockpit windows at the top there. What a wonderful scene. I'm guessing this was probably at Lyd down in Kent. They ran a service uh, flying, hopping over the channel from Lyd. Next up, a colour photo of NLW2. That's a Ford Cortina Estate Mark II, of course. The registration shows is no longer listed. Um, in the background, we've got what appears to be a Jaguar S-Type. And beyond that, a yellow and white Anglia 105E. Talking of Anglia 105Es, we've got a young lady here doing a spot of knitting at the back of her Anglia 105E registration 554. MP, that's a London series that was introduced in March of 1960. On the front view of the same Ford Anglia here, you can see various badges on the front, extra lamps uh, and wing mirrors to boot. It's got the narrow grille, so I think this was a base model version of the Anglia. If I remember right, the Deluxe had a much wider grille that went all the way across to the edges uh, where the extra lamps are colour photo now. This is Banbury in July of 1966. We've got an HAV on the left and a Mark 1 Cortina. There's a BMC lorry, a yellow lorry, and an A55 Cambridge Mark II being followed by a Bedford CA complete with yellow headlamps. So presumably it's been on the continent recently. To a BMC service facility and there's a gent underneath a Morris Minor Traveller, he appears to be given in a grease up, and it's a, presumably it's a brand new car, you can just see chalk marks under the rear wheel arch, so um, maybe this was at Cowley, makes sense. The dashing chap here, but of, of real interest, is the little van in the background, it appears to be an Austin A30 or an, an early Austin A35 van still had the recesses in the front doors. The later vans didn't have those pressings. So much simpler playing the door altogether. Just a few more to go and here we've got MPF 348. This just about creeps into the 1950s. These were built or introduced rather in the late 1940s and produced until the early 1950s. It's the AC 2 litre saloon. a few more British cars of the 50s and 60s to go and we've got two Mark 1 Minis here on an amazing little ferry. This is a Mark 3 sea truck and it's photographed with the Minis on board on during trials that took place on Southampton Water in the late 1960s. Uh, what a great shot that is. A lady and a child now and they are both stood alongside a Vauxhall Victor F-Type, location unknown. If you've not already seen them, this is the fifth in a series of videos I've done featuring just original photographs, mostly black and white and a few colour of British cars in the 50s and 60s, so if you've not seen them please check them out. Here we've got an E-Type Vauxhall on the left, I'm guessing probably a Wyvern, and on the right is the booted, the Phase 2 version of the Standard Vanguard of the mid-1950s. A couple more to go. Back to Manchester, and there's Melbourne Street going away off up to the left. I think this is in Harper Hay, looking at the map, but that building's no longer there. In the foreground, we've got a Morris Minor and another Morris Minor a bit further away. And on the right, an Austin A55 Cambridge Mark II. And rounding out this collection of old photographs, we've got a gent and possibly his mother. Uh, and in the background, an Armstrong Sidley Sapphire. Looking a little worse for wear, and alongside that, a pre war car of the 1930s, possibly a Humber, maybe. But again, let me know in the comments if you know what that particular car is on the right hand side. So, that completes this collection of 60 photos of original photos of British cars in the 1950s and the 1960s. Uh, thanks very much for watching, there'll be more videos along very, very soon. So, bye for now.